Judge orders nine months in jail for heroin overdose. Two dead in Wauwatosa home. Second body recovered on Lake Wisoto. These stories and more coming up on Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS TV, news content provided by WHBL. Hello, I'm Maddie Fister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, August 23rd, 2018. A new Holstein man will spend nine months in jail and five years on probation with his part in a drug overdose in May. Cody Lawrence was sentenced by Judge L. Edward Stangl after Lawrence pleaded no contest to two of the felony charges he faced. The criminal complaint says police were called to a home on North 10th Street in Sheboygan on May 19th after getting reports of an unresponsive woman who had overdosed. First responders arrived and rushed the woman to the hospital where detectives later learned by talking to her that Lawrence had helped arrange a drug deal for her in Milwaukee. The woman said she was already on probation, went to the detention center to give a urine sample, and then drove to Milwaukee with Lawrence to buy heroin. When they returned to Sheboygan, she used the heroin and became unresponsive. The woman was charged with possessing narcotics and drug paraphernalia. A referendum question about legalizing marijuana is set to be on Eau Claire County's November ballot. The county board approved the question Tuesday night, and voters will have the choice of making marijuana legal for medical per and recreational purposes for those over the age of 21, only legalizing it for medical purposes with a prescription or keeping the drug illegal. It is an advisory question only and does not have the power to change the law. That needs to be done by the state legislature. Governor Walker has opposed a rollback of marijuana laws and currently the only medical use allowed in Wisconsin is cannabis oil in pill form, which can help children who suffer from seizures. If marijuana is legalized, Eau Claire County supervisors say money from taxes on the drug would be used for education, health care, and infrastructure. Milwaukee County Supervisor Marcella Nicholson will pay a $794 fine and undergo alcohol treatment as part of a no contest plea to a charge of driving with an excessive blood alcohol level. Nicholson was arrested in July after crashing her car into a median on Interstate 43 with a blood alcohol level of more than twice the legal limit. After the crash, she initially said that she had only had one drink. The morning after the incident, she released a statement through her attorney, I will make no excuses. I made a horrible mistake and I am embarrassed by my actions. I apologize to my constituents, colleagues, and community members for my inexcusable decision. The 30-year-old says that she will not resign from the Board of Supervisors where she serves as the vice chair. Defense attorney Michael Maestelman says he entered the no contest plea for her in exchange for getting other operating while intoxicated and failure to control a motor vehicle charges dropped. Under Wisconsin law, a first offense drinking and driving case is not a criminal matter. It is a violation with a civil forfeiture. Madison firefighters recovered the body of a man who was swept away by flood water on the city's west side Monday night. Two other people in the vehicle the man was driving were rescued by people who came to their aid. Dane County Executive Joe Paris declared a state of emergency in the wake of torrential rains in the western portion of the county. 
reports ranging from 8 inches to 13 inches. West Madison, Middleton, Cross Plains, and Black Earth were especially hard hit. There was extensive flooding of city streets and rural roads and highways, and law enforcement agencies stress that motorists need to avoid the roads and intersections with standing water. Hundreds of people were stranded overnight at businesses in the area. Authorities say they have found the body of the second boater missing since the weekend. The search ended Tuesday morning when the body of 22-year-old Antonio Robinson was located in the water near the dam on Lake Wissota. Both of the deceased men were from Minnesota and were in town on a camping trip with family. A pontoon that was towing an inner tube was adrift on the lake and eventually ran aground with only a dog on board. The two had been staying at a nearby O'Neill campground and were reported missing when they did not return at nightfall. The circumstances of the two deaths were unknown and still under investigation. It is thought that one of the victims was in the tube, got dumped into the water, and the other victim drowned while trying to save him. Police say two men were found dead inside of a Wauwatosa home after a reported of shots fired. Authorities found the men inside a resident in residence in the 7900th block of Warren Avenue Wednesday afternoon around 5.30 p.m. A gun was found near the bodies and no names have yet been released. Police say they are not seeking any suspects and there is no danger to the public. The two high profile political races in Wisconsin for governor and U.S. Senate are statistical ties according to new Marquette Law School poll. It is the first poll taken since the primaries earlier this month. In the race for governor, incumbent Republican Scott Walker and Democrat challenger Tony Evers are tied among likely voters. 46 to 46.6 percent of those surveyed preferred Libertarian Phil Anderson and 2 percent were undecided. In the U.S. Senate race, incumbent Democrat Tammy Baldwin leads Republican challenger Leah Vukmor 49 to 47 percent. And that result is within the polls of 4% margin of error. Voters ranked jobs and the economy as more important issue in the state, followed by the kindergarten to 12th grade education and health coverage. Scott Walker's approval rating was up slightly from 47 to 48%. And Donald Trump's job approval rating rose among Wisconsin voters climbing from 42 to 45%, and 87% of the registered Republicans had a favorable view of the president. 92% of the Democrats had an unfavorable view. The survey of 800 registered voters was conducted between August 15th and 18th. And finally, Freddie Peralta and two relievers combined to a five hitter as the Brewers blanked the Cincinnati Reds four to zero in Milwaukee on Wednesday afternoon. Peralta struck out seven over seven innings of three hit ball for the win. Jeremy Jeffries got a final four out for the save. Kristen Yellick went four for four with a home run and two RBI. Lorenzo Kane added three hits and an RBI as Milwaukee won for the third time in four games. Robert Stevenson allowed four runs in five plus frames to take the loss. Jose Peraza had two of the Cincinnati's five hits in defeat and also stole a base. The Brewers took two of the three against the Reds and the crew has Thursday off then opens up a three-game weekend series against Pittsburgh at Miller Park. Wade Miley gets the start 
in the opener for the crew, while Joe Musgrove pitches for Pittsburgh. The Brewers have, are a half game ahead of Colorado in the race for the top National League wildcard spot. And that is all we have for today. Join me again next week for another recap of our local news. From all of us at Community News Review, have a great day. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.